Welcome to What Drives You, where we explore just the expanse of our human potential and the miracle of being alive. I'm your honored guide, Kevin Miller. In this episode, we want to help you increase your wellness by elevating your desired healthy habits and routines into cherished rituals, sacred even, if you will. When we talk about things for our health and wellness, diet, sleep, exercise, and we can often fall into viewing them as a chore. It's a should, right? Instead of a reverent endeavor that we choose to do for our glorious well-being, rituals, by definition, they transcend mere chores and instill a reverence and sacredness to the effort. So in this episode, my dear friend, Randy James, medical doctor and functional medicine expert, we talk about taking our daily health and wellness habits and treating them as true rituals that give them far more depth and meaning, which of course helps dramatically to how we perceive them and therefore consistently engage with them for the benefits that we truly desire. So we're not talking about clanging, clanging gongs or chanting in robes, though, if that helps you, please do that. Be free. But even if it's just an activity where you consider the deep reason you're doing it, what is the core motive? What is the core benefit you're looking for? And you put a smile on your face and you feel gratitude instead of a chore. Well, that's a win. And as you're listening to this, if you think of some that you've done that with, you've taken a should, a chore and made it a joy, let me know. I'd like to hear about it. I'll, sh I'll share about it uh, on a previous, on a next show, on an upcoming show. And, uh, or if there's one that you think, ah, here's one that I'd love to, and maybe you got a question, how do I take this that I don't like doing? I really don't and, and make it a ritual. Don't know that I'll have the exact answer, but let's talk about it. Email me kmiller at kevinmiller.co. I spent this morning responding to listeners on such things and uh, it's such a gift. What drives you becomes your reality. So let's create a better reality right now. Drive with me a moment. Let's talk about taking our shoulds and our chores into glorious rituals. I was talking with my brother. Jared, Jared on Gaza. He has a different last name, literally changed his name. Not because he doesn't like Miller, but he, he adopted a different image. It's really cool. So Jared on Gaza, talking to my brother the other night and talking to him and saying, you know, hey, so I'm doing, I'm not doing wine in the evening. And I told him, he said, it's interesting because I, you know, realize I don't have to have it. I can do without it, but I really like it. And I like my little, you know, I do, I, I do this and I do this. And he says, ritual. He says, mm. yeah. He says, I'm, he, I know this is what he said that this is why it stopped me. Cause he said, yeah, dude, us Millers, even though his last name changed, but he's us Millers. We really like ritual. I never, so brand new paradigm, brand new yep, context. Yep. And I realized, holy smokes, I do. And my ritual changes depending on kids schedules and whatever. But like right now, if I was to take my coffee, I have a coffee ritual. I come in here to the office. I don't have it generally until I come in here. I come in, I go and start well because because the, the other hot water thing broke uh I, yeah, it's working again it's working again i know <laughs> but i start the uh, instant hot water pot start that i come over here to the i have a what's it called pour over mm -hmm. so pour over thing i put it in there and i put half decaf half calf that's just what i do uh when the thing is boiling I bring it in here to my office set it down in the same spot you know, computer comes on or if I'm still doing a devotional thing or whatever I'm doing. And I pour the first little round of water over my grounds and it goes in and after it quits dripping, do the next one. And I do that until there's enough in there. And then I pour it in my ember, E-M-B-E-R, my ember mug, which keeps it really hot. And I sip it and I sip a little until it's gone down an inch or two. And then I put some more in because I've had some more dripping. And I realized it's the ritual. And so if I couldn't have coffee, can I do the same thing with tea? That's what I would go to. Mm -hmm. And when I've not had coffee, I did it with tea. So at night, I'm not doing wine. So I go and I do a squish of lemon, uh, some seltzer water. I have it in the same glass. And I, and I realize ritual. Okay, so there's my premise. You, yeah, you with yeah, me? Yeah. Okay, so I'm thinking about that in relation to, and for anybody who watches the video, so I'm going to hold up two books. Uh, there you go. Atomic Habits and... The Power of Habit. So The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. We read that a long time ago. Yep. I've marked the heck out of it. Atomic Habits, one of the best-selling books since I can remember. Yep. So Habits, and I'm thinking, we all get the habits, but we look at it as this task we're going to do. And what you and I have attested to, but I haven't put it in these words, is what has helped us have the good habits is 
instilling them in a daily, you could call it a routine. I'm right. going to take that a step up from habits. The habits fits in the routine. But even more so, I think we appreciate, and I wanted to throw at you, the ritual. And I just hadn't thought about it in that term. I like this. Call, I, think, I do think words matter. So I'll give you that. Yep, I'm with you and resonating and thinking about that in the clinic where to go one step above ritual, there are moments with a patient. And, and the word that I'm, I'm going to use is sacred. Okay, okay so, so, and I'll go to my coffee routine in the morning and having read other people who've been struggling or trying to become better or whatever. And, and so many people will attest to the power of the ritual of the morning routine and coffee is, is a, is a theme for so many people. Mm -hmm. Now, would we elevate coffee to the level of sacred nearly? I mean, almost nearly, right? Like you said, if I can't do it with coffee, can I do it with tea? So there, there, there could be the downside of that with caffeine addiction, et cetera, et cetera. So leave that part aside and you and I, as coffee lovers, have, it's so special, it's nearly above ritual to the point of sacred. Like if it got taken away, that would change my paradigm of life, in, in, in a sense. Does that resonate with you? It, it did does. I go, what, did I go too far? No, no, no. I, no, I, I love it, because I, I, I do, um, again, that's what I wasn't pondering till now, because if we said, if you said, yeah, man, I've got a really... Um, you don't even have to give it an adjective, you know, good or whatever. I've got an exercise habit. We would say, awesome. Yeah. I've got a, a devotion or spiritual habit. We'd say, awesome. If you said, I have a coffee habit. It's a little bit of a question mark. You kind of think, yeah. oh, like an addiction. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But if you said, I have a coffee routine. Okay. Coffee or, ritual? Uh, <laughs> it goes a little bit, oh, that's kind of weird. But think about, mm -hmm. I'm trying to, how can I relate to this? So everybody's going to have to think about their own things. But if you think about it in a ritual, do you have one at home? Mm -hmm. um, I remember talking to Mark Tim. So Mark Tim is head of, well, he's a big business guy, and I've had him on the show, Ziegler Family. And he talked about finally coming to the, don't know if he called it, habit, ritual, routine, but realizing he would literally, he has a long driveway like I do. Like you do. And he said he would stop at the beginning of it. Uh, yep, Take, exactly. Yeah. Take a deep breath. And he said his mental image was he had his sword for work yeah. up. And he would put that down. And I think he said he would pick up his sword and this is family. I'm about yeah. to walk in. Yeah. Let that guy go yeah. and do that. And it was, uh, so he could say, I developed a habit. He could say it's part of my routine. But I like the aspect of ritual because what I'm realizing is I... I like that idea of a ritual. I like the ritual around. It's, I don't just cook food to eat. I, right. It's an event. It's, it, well, it's it, sacred. And to wine. I love it. Yeah, a glass of wine and music. You just don't and, drink wine to get drunk? <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. Uh, I love the ritual. So now I do it with my seltzer and you know whatever stuff. But I, mm -hmm. I'm enamored with that because over, we're all trying to do these habits. And if I wonder, I feel like for me, it's more engaging, mm -hmm. palatable, attractive. attractive mm -hmm. Thank you. It's more attractive to think I want this routine. I want to be the kind of guy who has a routine like this. And even to have a ritual it elevates it. Yeah. It now, now, okay. It does. Even as I'm thinking about, cause we've toyed around with the idea of on the exercise side, it feels a little weird to say, Oh, I love my burpees. It's a ritual that's so special. Well, burpees suck. <laughs> <laughs> that's my point, my right? Gosh. Like there's the kinds of exercise that people will never say, oh, I love the burn of doing squats. That's just, oh. you can say that about jogging, maybe walking, biking, but there's some kind of exercises that are, and and if you said ritual of wine, people are going to look at you like, that's a little borderline of the relationship to wine yeah. or coffee or, right, like, like I think people would look at us and say, wow, that's really special that you guys have a ritual like we're getting ready to. Of lunch, yeah. Lunch on the deck in the sunshine for 30 minutes and talk about life. I'm obviously loving that even with exercise, I have not thought of it as a ritual. And yet as my brother's talking about it, I'm realizing 
Oh my gosh, I, that's a, yeah, I would say you're you're close to it. I would say it's attractive to think of that because I I know the time. I get a positive feeling. I have my bag. I could go through it right here. I have my bag over you there. Got your stuff. Yeah. I walk out. What's the temperature? Because you never know here. You got your. Your, what do we call the, the things that people set up for a, a ritual, right? Like you've got your, your oil and your wine and your uh-huh. water and your knife and you're going to scratch yourself. <laughs> yeah. But you call it my workout clothes. And, and I go out <laughs> and I know the moment I hit the woods and how I feel and a ritual. And I'm thinking about it now mm-hmm. that right now, is it, would it, how would it feel? How does it feel inside uh-huh. me to, th- to say, gosh, my current, um, that's my you know, I run and ride in the outside. I also have a ritual of trying to, when I stand up to think I'm going to do a set of burpees or a set of push ups or a set of dips or a set of, and it's just a habit I do. It's, okay. That just feels right. disciplined and whatever. It's yeah, a routine. It's a, yeah, it's I like not that a ritual. better for me to look at the chin up bar. It's not sacred at all. It, it stinks. But, but, but I, I want feel it bad to be. if I don't do it. I, yeah, but ha, can I can I enter it can into you elevate it? Yeah, can I uh-huh. elevate it? It's a mindset. Have gratitude with it. <sighs> so grateful. Gratitude like, for pull ups. I'm so grateful that you can do it. <laughs> that I can. Yeah. I'm. I'm. Well, that's you know, what the, you said the average that before. American male can do one. And I read something the other day of you're a rock star if you can just do five. Average, yes. You and I feel like oh my gosh I can only do I'll, five. I'll, I'll do fifteen most days. I uh, half days. Yeah, and I've, I'm getting back into it. I came out, so I'm at like eight and ten. Without killing myself. Well, yeah, without torture. Yeah. And it's, but I, I still don't love it. Uh, I well, love but you obviously, having done it. That I do love. Okay, okay. You're still doing it with a, well, maybe that's relevant to look at. If it's a ritual, does it have to be, do you only have a ritual with something that's pleasure? Ooh, yeah. That's the way I want it to be. That, that I think, is kind of the distinction of, could I change my mind? Would that, yeah. maybe that's a question. Would doing this, talking around this, would this help us better? I guess, yeah. I shouldn't say I guess. That was my interest in this discussion yeah. was if I do this and look first off at saying, this is a routine that I want for my life that I think is beneficial and even more so. And these are, are, are actual rituals that I like to do in how we're defining that. Will that help me better achieve engaging in and doing the daily habits that I want to do? And I'm thinking for me, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking for me, yes, and I think for most humans, yes. That calling it, the, we're back to mindset and awareness, calling it a habit, a good thing, and those verses saying, this is my ritual, I feel like it's sacred. It You just changed, again, wordsmithing here, the personality of burpees, or we changed the personality of coffee. Uh- Okay, okay, I'm totally with you. And in the personality, so I'm thinking of, again, I think words, you know, matter. Is this something I want to do versus I have to do? Yeah. Um, a habit I get to do feels like a logical decision. Yeah. A ritual feels very clinical. Yes, thank you. A ritual feels emotional. Ooh. Yeah. I would. And I'm more back to relationship. I'm more apt to do the habits of pull ups, burpees, whatever, if I think this is just part of the ritual of who I am. Holy cow. I'm, I just, I'm thinking about this in the clinic and as we, and, and it took me years to be able to say this, but I now un, un, uh, unashamedly would say I'm selling a product, right? Yeah, right. But one of the words that I'll, I'll, I'll look somebody in the eye and say, look, I cannot guarantee that you'll feel better, but I can guarantee my relationship with you through this process. Hmm. And I think it's your best chance at getting over there. Yes. Okay. So I'm, yes, I have elevated, I've downgraded clinical and elevated emotional. Yes. On purpose. And at the same time, I think if we did a randomized double blind super control trial on, you know, what's the effect of clinical versus what's the effect of relational, the relational, relationship with your doctor or your coach or your wife is going to be way better than clinical. Yeah. So if we take our aspirations out of the words of habit, have to, and put them over here in emotional, relational story, the chances that we be, be that I be becoming next summer, a 50 year old guy by then who can do X, Y, Z things is higher than if I say, Self, 
thou shalt do this yeah. clinical thing. Well, and to my, it's so hard not to bleed over, but you know, the, what drives you podcast and we're talking about, this is why you have three podcasts, I guess so, <laughs> but motive and drive. So today, and I'll keep him, he, he's probably going to listen to this show. Um, I'll keep him anonymous, but I got this question because he was asking, you know, did I have time to talk with him? And I said, you know, time's always an issue, but what? And he said, what would you tell someone who doesn't know what they want to do? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's about everybody from 15 to 20. And I'm, and I'm thinking about that in this context and what they want to, you know, all these things. Let me, let me add to that. Okay. Yesterday, 37, eight year old patient teared up when I asked the question, Hey, you're the, I work for you. You're the captain of the ship. Where do you want to go? Hmm. Teared up. And said, that question is humiliating. I don't know. And I just backed up and said, I am so sorry. That's, this guy's asking the same thing, but he's actually, he wants to want. She did too. Okay. And the underlying pathology in this person is depression, anxiety, and all that. So she didn't, couldn't find the feelings of want to want to. And I just backed way up and said, okay, look, I, for most people, they're honored if I say, I work for you, where do you want to go? But in this particular case, I was, I humiliated, the, if, mm-hmm. think about it. If the captain of the ship is, I don't know where to turn and everybody else is saying, captain, captain, oh, captain, my captain, where do we go? And they're spinning, 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 spinning. It is humiliating. And I, I apologize. I'm so sorry. Let's just talk about your labs. <laughs> Let's. So that you can think better to answer this question, let's look at cholesterol and yada, yada. And so this guy too. Okay. So keep going with your story there. I just wanted to add that it's well daily. You just, it's, it's huge. And, and I, you know, I kind of gave a little response, but he said, I'm just looking for a spark Mm -hmm. to ignite the fire within me. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I did Bruce Springsteen. Yes. You can't start a can't, fire without the spark. I and, know. And, <laughs> and there's the Holy grail issue. How do you start a spark with somebody? I, nobody knows. This is the mystery. Nobody right. knows. Yeah. Generally okay. a spark is started with us reactively. I believe. Pain. Yes. Yeah. Believe I'm fired. Yeah. I want to get away I'm from pain starve. or I'm choosing. I want to get pleasure. Yeah. The doctor says I'm going to die. I'm going to, we generally, I yep. think as humans react to Drama. that, we want to get to the place but, but even there, it's an emotional thing. And I told him, I said, man, again, we're looking for that, you know, that spark. I said, I think admittedly for me, one of the primary reasons is not because I'm so mature, right. it's not because I'm wise. It's not because I am so disciplined to that you've uh, worked so hard that, to get here. Yeah. And yeah. that I'm going for more tomorrow because I'm so great in any way. It's really fear of if I don't. If I don't do my burpees, if I don't run, it's the fear of what I will become. I think that is my most, it's just an admission. I think that is my, my most driving more so than even how I am right this moment is I fear demise. Okay, I'm going to push back on you. Okay. Because we know, I think you and I may have talked about it, that the power, the success rate of aspiration for the positive is better than running away from the negative. Okay, say it again. That your chances of of being the Kevin Miller that you would desire to be. If I say, Kevin, I work for you. You're the captain of the ship of Captain Kevin Miller. Where do you want to go? And if you just keep saying, I don't want to crash on the rocks. I don't want to crash on the rocks. I'm like, yeah, but we're getting away from the rocks and towards something that you call success and prosper okay, and this kind okay, of thing. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, no, no, that's, that's relevant. Because over here, what uh, you're right. Okay. You're right to a degree. So right, if I look over both. here, I want to be 90 years old. Right. And if I'm alive... I want to be, have capacity. That's right. That is what I want. Right. And the fear of incapacity of incapacity right. in the moment can sometimes I feel like be a greater motivator when I feel like, ah, I don't really feel like going out. Yeah. I don't, but I don't want to be becoming the incapable or, victim. or I don't, or I do want that. I guess it's yeah. semantics. It is both. It still has that. You're right. It still has that gonna, goal of achievement. And but, at, Maybe the goal is positive, but the motivator in the moment, maybe that's okay. what I'm saying is maybe it gets me out of the chairs, man. If I go for two days, three days, I'm afraid of the decline. Okay. Okay. And not being able to catch back up, keep my momentum. 
I, I mean, one of the hardest things for anybody trying to make progress is when they feel like I've, yeah, I kind of lost my momentum. Lost momentum. That is a okay. death nail for most people. Um, I, I've done it enough over time yeah. that I either don't lose my momentum because I, I don't like the feeling of that, or I know that I can get back. I have faith that, that if I'm going to be injured and out for a while, that I can get back. So there you go. I would say. Yeah, because I've and all of us all the time are good momentum, bad momentum in various areas of life. Agreed. Right. Like right now, my exercise momentum is not great because Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are so stinking busy and kids and chauffeur and whatever. But pretty good, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I, I agree. I can get it back. But my keto keto trial momentum has been pretty good. Yeah, it's been spot on. <laughs> well, I mean, so again, if we look at habits, so we're all yeah, enamored. Yeah, Obviously, okay. I mean, the the just to go to Atomic Habits, I, I literally can't remember the last time I saw a book uh, in the self help category sell so much. I don't. I get the bestseller list from my agent, and uh, it's unbelievable how much it is selling. People, obviously, I have to assume want that. They want the habits that create the tiny changes that create, you know, big stuff. They, they want that. And yet I hear from people that even in reading it, they're still not making that. I'm afraid logical, or I'm concerned, logical decision to be disciplined and have my habits. So come over here. And again, to play with that root word, let's, if we go up the ladder routine, to me, that feels a little more emotional. This is my daily chosen routine. I'm choosing to get up at this time to do this certain thing or not to eat this way or not to commute or not to whatever. And this is my routine. But now if we take it up and say, what about a ritual? And then you said sacred. I think we could stop at ritual. If you're not a spiritually prone person, Mm -hmm. I am going to put sacred. And for you Mm -hmm. and I, we might even put calling Mm -hmm. conviction, Mm -hmm. Uh, purpose, you know, all those on there. But Mm -hmm. again, the the word ritual enamored me. What are the rituals? I look forward to the ritual of my coffee. I look forward to the ritual of our lunch. Yeah. I mean, we have it. I'm I'm automatically thinking, did I bring anything? If I didn't, do I have something in the cupboard? If not, am I going to get something or fast? We always, I always put mine in my microwave in the office. The, the sun. The sunshine coming in. Are we going to sit outside? We're going to sit down. We always do the exact same thing. We sit down, deep breath. And we're either sitting in your office floor or out on the deck, if it's warm enough. There it's may be a pause. It's a ritual. And then something is talked about. Generally, we begin. Thank you, God. Gratitude. Yeah. yeah. I love that ritual. So same thing then. I'm, we have a ritual going home and... Mine generally, it, it, you know, I'll go in and food, and whatever, and it's, you know, a wine. I love looking at, you know, what's the label, what's the story. If I don't have that, I'm looking at realizing, okay, I don't have to have alcohol, but I, I want a ritual. So a drink, a well, food, food. I've prep. tried in the past a pipe, <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't quite. <laughs> Get it, but but every time I watch Lord of the Rings, I think, oh, I want yeah. Gandalf's ritual. It looks so contemplative and yeah. wise. Yeah. I, so I, yeah, maybe I'll try it. Maybe I'll try a pipe again uh, as a ritual. My brother I, says he loves that. He goes and sits outside, <sighs> takes that. He loves the smoke and okay. It's been one of those things for hundreds of years. I chose a while ago, and I think it was Andrew Weil. Remember him, the big beard, big oh yeah, yeah, guy, and. Uh, and so I have elevated to ritual chopping my onions, smelling them, food prep, rather than, oh my gosh, I can't believe we've got to chop onions and oh, we're behind. It's going to take 30 minutes. I really minutes like to do chopping this. onions. I do too. It's really full Just the, for some the mindfulness of, I don't want to buy one of those contraptions where it chops the onion all at once uh-huh. because they're hard to clean. And uh, I want to chop my onions. Have you ever noticed, if you ever watch like the high-end five-star chefs, they're never using a food processor. I mean, I say that, and I'm sure there's one out there that does, but generally... But they have a $1,000 knife. I, yeah, they do. <laughs> and yeah. so, that's right. I, um, it, it, rather than thinking of food prep as a colossal pain in the rear that I've got to get through, I put on music, and in my 90 days of keto, I try to get my mind away from wine to say, I'm going to choose to get my mind on the food prep. 
and maybe I'll have a bubbly water with, you know, you know, lemon and those kind of things. And, um, 90 days into it, I would, I would still say I, I miss the wine, but I can look forward to thinking I'm going to go into a rhythm of, of weekend wine and, and, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is keto. And that is a rhythm in and of itself of the ritual rhythm of creating ketosis, which is like burpees. I mean, it's not super fun, but it's way better than fasting. Or I would say it like this. Anything pull-ups is way better than burpees. I, I agree. <laughs> and I'll go for keto over fasting. That's right. Thanks. I'll go for yeah. keto over fasting and I'll go for bubbly instead of wine. And I still can't get you on the on the tea. I know. Can, I know. On the tea side. So you drink weirdo water over there as I'm drinking my tea. And so, but all of these things, I think that this discussion is way more than the clinical. You need to drink three liters of water a day. I, I love the word it's, clinical. Uh, let's, let's take clinical logical. Okay. We all get that with habits, with healthy habits, mm-hmm. it does not touch our emotions. I don't feel like, and nope. so can we, I, I like your term, elevate it. And I'm thinking about you, you have a podcast, a morning podcast ritual. I hear you. Sometimes you pull into the thing. Sometimes you'll sit there to listen to the rest right. of it, or you'll open the, no, no, you'll get out of the car and it's playing on your phone. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll hear you walk through and you have a ritual of something that inspires you or educates you or something. And often you'll talk about that at lunch. Okay. So I was listening to whatever podcast and you'll bring that yeah. ritual to our ritual. And it's good. Like that is part of our story. And we always grapple with, like even right now, okay, like you're, you know, the four basic whatevers of food and exercise, like we always want to, okay, make it easy for me. Just boil it down so that I can go and live my life and be a little bit better. And I think that's also okay. Like, I don't want to have to think about which route to take on the way to work every morning. And, you know, there has to be some autopilot stuff. Well, I, there's probably a diet to choose from. Okay, right now in this drive, do I want to practice gratitude for driving? Or, or for the scenery along the way. I could choose to and make that a ritual and say it's my ritual of going down for me to go go down my pass and see in there. And I do some of that. Or today, do I have something that I really want to give attention to and I'd rather be on autopilot so I can you think know, about something. Yeah. Else. So, yeah. so in, in essence, I'm saying, you know, being the, well, the aware and intentional. Yes. And this is, We talk about this all the time. Like, where are your lines? What are you going to fight about? What are you not? You're not, neither one of us are closed guys, right? Like, I barely have a second thought about what I'm going to wear. It's usually built on what am I going to do for exercise or not. And then off I go. So, so other people are closed people in appearance and it, how I look impacts how I feel and and all of that. So for you and I, that's on auto. Yeah. I, I will never have a ritual of what to pick out to wear. (laughs) <laughs> it's it's a burden. Yeah. Okay. Same with anything car related. Like yes. you're not a car guy. You, mm-hmm. There's no Zen in the art of motorcycle, something or other. Like that's weirdo. It's Zen in the art of walking a trail. Mm-hmm. And that's a conscientious choice. I'm okay with that. I don't think that's putting us at odds with our family or morals or things like that. But at some point, it would. And you and I, we talked this morning about. So if if my wife is an appearance person and and she wants, she feels better. If I look better, if we're going out together, then okay, mm-hmm. I'm going to choose to change my relationship with clothes in that regard. And now I feel like, okay, I've thought about that and I can move on to my other rituals that she might not have around like coffee in the morning. I'm going to spend time on that. I'm going to buy better coffee. I'm going to buy a French press and spend some time on that. And yeah. we have chosen to that with food, with exercise, with the sleep routine, sleep ritual, I would say for me oh has become gosh. ritualized and sacred and yes, protected, sacrosanct yeah. is that word. I, I use that with people in the sleep world is you've got to elevate your sleep routine to sacrosanct. You cannot let the news disrupt your sleep routine or whatever. I mean, it, it showcases, again, I haven't thought about it. That's why we're talking in this term of why I don't grab it. You guys have a, a Keurig machine thing out here. Yeah, yeah. For it the just, patients, not just, for me. I know, I know. But it, but for me, <laughs> no. it just doesn't resonate. I would just never rather do not Rather not have it. But I, yeah, but, yeah. I, but I didn't, 
ever conceptualize it. I don't think it's bad or wrong. It just, I didn't realize it skips the ritual. And that is part of what I like with my coffee. And it has me thinking about, and this is, this is, I'll, I'll attribute this to my brother, uh, somewhat too. He's very knowledgeable, interested in the native American culture. They were so yeah. ritualistic and sacred with things. And we see that we just recently saw dances with wolves and, you know, you have the, of course it's a de- stereotypical depiction. You have the white guy who just comes along cowboy and just blows the heck out of the Buffalo just to take its hide and its horns and then leaves it there. And the Indians have no concept. The Indians, native Americans have no concept of that because to them, this is a sacred thing. They're going to give thanks for the sacrifice of the animal. They're going to use every single piece of it. And I would say their joy of it overall is so much more. Gosh, that was our friend this morning, Todd, who has not had chips Right. In yeah. so long. And he said, so guys, you'll appreciate this. You healthy guys. Uh, I had, I didn't have a whole bag. I had like 15. I've never enjoyed them more. It was so good. And he told his office makers about it. Yeah. That gave him and hours like, of joy compared to the guilt of, oh my gosh, I can't believe I ate a whole bag of chips. Or just wolfing it down and not being present, and not being which we talked about. might've been <laughs> in the last show about the joy that the people in that alone documentary show thing yeah. had with a squirrel right. and they bit into it and it was manna from heaven. Right. And today, uh, the other day I went and got sushi. I hadn't in a while. And for, I think just where my mind was, I just didn't even enjoy it that much. Yeah, and, I know, yeah. and they would have dropped down in euphoria for it. And right. here I am having, it, and I just, I wasn't even, that's right. I, I was not, I did not make it a sacred moment and I missed out on the gratitude. So again, we're back into the, I hadn't thought about this. That's why we had discussion. The emotion, as opposed to clinical and logical, if habits fits in there, can we elevate that into an emotional state that better equips us to engage with it and get the results that we want? I was going to say, towards what end? Well, peace, joy, contentment, satisfaction. These are all wonderful things that the world is after, right? Like, what is the point of, of life and if how many times in my journal when I start off with, okay, what's the gratitude thing? Well, start off with God. I am in his presence. I get to be. And then you go on from there. And part of it is then going to be, I get to eat. I get to think. I get to, to do burpees. I can. And, uh, at the, and then you go to sleep at night with that ritual routine to say thank you. And at the end of the day, I'm going to say, okay, that, that's a life well lived. In the... To me, somewhat, I want to say frustrating, I guess, maybe I shouldn't, but I, it's the admission, is that we're sitting here talking about all this, and we're, we're again coming back and saying, is it all in your head? Pretty much so. We are playing mind games with ourselves, trying to manipulate our minds to get to what we feel like is our true life, and saying, how can I do that? And if I take this habit that I think will help fulfill this aspect of true life for Kevin, how can I create it in a way that'll get me to engage with it? If I think about it as discipline, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, but we'll, I'm going to push back on you. Okay. In, in, in with agreement and the both and yeah, yeah. statement to say. Somebody the other day said, said it like this, that you don't get to boil it down to that. Meaning, we are on the razor-thin tight rope of life. The way is narrow, the way is wide, what's the right way? And you, you just, is it in your mind? Yeah, of course. Every single thing that you ever feel, think, whatever is in your mind, but... You know, tell that to the guy who just got a piece of dust in his eye. Oh, just don't worry about it. I mean, it's just, or even a, just a little splinter in your finger. Like, life stops until you go get splinter out. Yeah. Now, if there's a worse thing, like if your kid's getting ready to drown, okay, the splinter goes down a notch, and okay, life stops until that. Those are very physical. They're not in your mind at all, hardly. But they are. And so I, I and this is where we struggle so much with, okay, if life is walking a tightrope, if you're out there, and I'm not, have you ever done a slack line? Yeah. So you're on the slack line. And slack line is a great example of flow because you cannot think about anything else. Yeah. All right, that's what it is. You, you don't get to coast or go to autopilot or go to, 
you, you ultimately, right, there's not going to be a landing place. It is constant awareness and autopilot and awareness and autopilot as you're navigating where your attention goes, where your where your life goes. Yeah. One moment to the next, and that's where we navigate. Uh, you present. said navigating. I'm also though thinking that every day we are we are training ourselves absolutely for, for better for better or worse. And whatever you're doing in that moment is the sum total of your last 50 years of training. Yes. So how I respond yeah. to that environmental thing that yeah. I can't control in your mind. I'm training and myself with your for, body. Yeah, I'm training myself for today. The next fit. Well, today and the next fifty years. Yeah. My capacity, my resilience, yes. my yes. whatnot. So in looking at these, if I want to be the kind of guy who achieves this, I'm then the kind of guy who does this today. The best way to do that, if I'm looking at that, is it to think of clinical, logical, self uh, discipline, or as Ben Hardy says, you know, use my willpower. Or am I crafting my environment and in this say, which I'd say, yes, crafting my environment, but then am I also, how can I craft, I like that word, my yeah. mindset to help me better achieve. Yeah. And I'm all of a sudden enamored with the rituals that I am going to adopt and engage with. How many rituals can I look at? And not to over ritualize right, and then you get weird on it yeah and i'm gonna sacredly walk to get my glass of water i you know i don't i don't no. in that or, moment i'm just just give me some water right. but or go to the bathroom brush my teeth when we're looking right. at motive though the things to look forward to i look forward to my morning routine i look forward to my exercise routine i look forward to our lunch routine um i look forward to family routines and you have as a testament to you, you have crafted. Yeah. And a scriptural word is workmanship. We are his workmanship. We are the sum crafted total of spiritual work, relational work, mental work, physical work. And we're back to that tightrope again. It's all the above all the time. And whether you like it or not, you are crafting your life. Mm -hmm. What kind of life do you want to craft? Mm -hmm. And to look down and go, whether we were intentional or not, we all have a daily routine. Yes. Is that fair? Yeah. Can, can anybody, I mean, is, there, no, is, there, right. is there a chance there's nobody alive? Who's who, totally random? No, because that yeah. is chaos. I would, I would call it death. It's a, I, or, yeah, I would say it's, it's arguably, it's impossible. You have a, you can't not have a routine for the most part. Right. Even with the disruptions, you're going to have a routine. Right. Did you choose it? Did it choose you? Right. And now I'm looking at it and going, can I go beyond that even and say, this is, this is a ritual that I adopt and to maybe not all aspects, is, but as many as possible, I'm going to, is there, is there an opportunity for, as you said, the sacred within it? Yeah. I want to work towards it. Well, Hey, thank you for joining me on this journey to talk about rituals and taking our daily habits and chores and the shoulds and making them something that we really find value in our soul uh, about. Again, if you've got some that you have done this successfully with, I, I, I'd ask you to share it with me. I want to know about it. Maybe it's one I can help myself with and share with our listeners in an upcoming episode that would help them. I'll revisit this. Or if there's one again, as I said in the intro that you're looking at and go, okay, yeah, I don't really enjoy doing this. How can I make it something I enjoy, make it a ritual and you're not sure. Let me know. K Miller at Kevin Miller.co. I'd be uh, grateful to engage directly with you. You just heard my buddy, Randy James. You can find him at true life medicine.com. I got a, I'm in Florida right now, but I got a text from the folks at the office just yesterday saying, Hey man, a listener just enrolled with them at true life medicine to become a patient, to get to the root issues of their illness, disease. I don't know what they were dealing with, but uh, you are welcome to talk with them there. If it's not to engage with them, they may just have a good resource for you. So true life medicine.com. Yeah. Folks, I hope this episode helps you drive further and most of all, enjoy the ride. Thanks so much for joining me on this journey. I look forward to meeting you in the Drive Tribe community for ongoing discussions about each episode. You can subscribe to the Drive Drop newsletter for weekly updates. Find it all at kevinmiller.co along with all our social media and video clips. Until next time, I hope this episode helps you drive further 
and enjoy the ride.